Good morning. Alrighty, or afternoon, really. Um, we're here for yoga. So, just giving everybody a moment. Good morning. I keep saying good morning and it's afternoon. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm gonna go to my mat. I might not be able to see when people join or if you leave comments, but I will get to the comments or questions after. Um, so yeah, here we go. <clears throat> okay, so in our class today, you may want a block or a stack of books. Um, that's my cat Milo. <laughs> um, the purpose of the block is to bring the ground up to you if you can't reach it. Um, so yeah, you can use a stack of books if you don't have a block. Um, another thing we might use later on is a strap. Um, which you can use a belt or a scarf to help out and that'll be towards the end of the class um, so those can be put off to the side and then as far as a mat you can either use a mat or a towel or I don't know just the floor <laughs> um, so yeah but let's get started so starting on your floor your mat your towel. Let's go ahead and lay on our backs. From here, reach your arms out into like an X and your legs are just a little bit wider than your hips. And then just close your eyes and breathe. your feet and push through the balls of your feet to point and flex your feet to allow your whole body to rock and it allows your head to nod yes. Do this for a little bit. And then find stillness. Notice any sensations or tingling that you may have throughout your body. From here, start rocking your body side to side so it makes your whole body say no. And then find stillness. Notice any different tingling or sensations throughout your body. Keep breathing. Go ahead and roll over to one side. And then continue rolling so you're on your belly. Push the hips back so that you come into a child's pose. Toes can be together, knees can be apart, knees can be together. Just find something that is comfortable for your body. And then focus on your breath here. Make sure you're breathing in and out the same length. Good 
walk your hands to one side and give your side body a nice stretch. Then walk your hands back to center and continue walking to the other side. Inhale, bring the hands back to center. Take a couple more breaths here. Bring the hands in slightly towards you and push up to tabletop. In tabletop, you want your spine to be neutral, so you don't want to let it hang or stick up. You want to find that neutral spine, straight back. From here, we're going to go through some cat-cows. So on your inhale, drop the belly. Look up with your, your eyes and your tail goes up towards the sky. And on your exhale, you go to the opposite extreme for your Halloween cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow, one more time. Exhale, cat. Return to a neutral. And I like to call this swimming like a fish, so you're going to bring your shoulder and hip the same side together and then you'll do the other side so you're like you're swimming like a fish okay find neutral now we're going to go through like a barrel roll so you're going to bring your torso down circle it around Bring it up through your cat and then back through your cow. You're circling your torso like a barrel. Do that one more time, that direction. And then switch. And find neutral. From here, walk your right hand out towards the front and walk your left foot back. So you're in this off position. Then find that sweet spot so you can lift both of those limbs up. Place them back to the mat. Bring them back underneath your hips and your shoulder. We'll do the other side, walking the left hand out, right foot back, lifting them up. And bringing them back to the mat. Bring them back to neutral. Lift one arm up and thread that needle through your arm. Relax your ear onto the mat. This other hand can extend out to the front. It can stay where it was. If you have a lot of rotation, you can hook it behind your back. Remember to breathe.
you're turning the arm back to where it was so you can push yourself back up to that tabletop and continue that same arm back up towards the sky. Return to tabletop. We'll do the other side. Arm up and thread through. Again, the arm can be reached out. It can stay where it was or you can hook it. Releasing the arm, pushing back up, and continuing that arm up to the sky. Return to tabletop, Ollie. Come on, get out of the camera. Lay down, lay down, good boy. Sorry about that. All right, we're back in our tabletop. Go ahead and tuck those back toes. Send the hips up for your first downward dog of the day. If your heels don't touch the ground, that's completely fine. Go ahead and walk out your dog. Remembering to press through your pointer fingers and your thumb. Then come up on your tiptoes and put all both heels to the right. Getting a nice stretch here. And come back on your tiptoes, shift the heels to the left. Remembering to breathe, bring the heels back to neutral, bend your knees, look between your hands and tiptoe your feet to the top of your mat. Allow your chest to hang and your head, relax your neck, shake your head yes, shake your head no. From here, inhale, bring your torso up to half lay lift or flat back. Your hands can be on your shins, they can be on your thighs, and then return to forward fold. Forward fold is where you can bring the ground up to you with that block or stack of books. If you can't reach the ground, you can bring that block and your block or even your books have different sides of heights. So you can figure out for your, your flexibility where you need to be. From your forward fold, inhale, sweep the arms up and bring hands heart center, closing the eyes, breathing, and open up those eyes, sweep the arms back up, and we'll dive back down for our forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, fold. Inhale, step back to your plank. Breathe. And on your next exhale, keep your elbows in towards your, your ribs and lower yourself to the ground. Release the toes. Keep the hands where they were by your ribs. Gently push your, your torso up. Notice I don't have a complete straight arm. I'm still bent. That allows you to really extend through your spine and then come down. We're gonna do that three more times. On this time, you're gonna look over your right shoulder. Inhale up, look over the right shoulder. Exhale down. Inhale, look over the left shoulder. Exhale down. Inhale, look through the center. One
one more time. Exhale down, tuck the toes, firm up the thighs, push back up to your plank, breathe, and on your next exhale, push back to downward dog. Take three breaths here. Bend the knees, look through your hands, and step the feet to your hands. Release into your forward fold. Toe heel the feet a little wider than your hips. And grab opposite elbows with your hands, allowing you to hang even deeper. Every time you exhale, Try to release a little more. If you want, you can do a little sway. Maybe even walk the hands to the left, getting a nice twist. And then walking the hands to the other side, getting a nice twist on that side. And then returning to center. Toe heel, the toes, the feet back underneath the hips. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Bring them through heart center and open up the hands to the side and you're standing in mountain pose, Tadasana. From here, we're gonna do that sun A two more times. You got this. Sweep the arms up, exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, fold. Inhale, step back to plank. Exhale, lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, lower down. Tuck the toes, firm up the thighs. Push back up to plank on an inhale. And exhale, push back to downward dog. Take th three breaths here. Bend the knees, look between the hands, step the feet forward. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, step back to plank. Exhale, lower down for chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, down. Inhale, press up to plank. Exhale, downward dog. Three breaths here. Looking between the hands, bending the knees, bringing the feet up towards the front of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up. Bring the heart, hands heart center, and out to the side. And just shake it out. Give your body a little shake, shake, shake. Good. Okay. 
Moving on. We're in Tadasana. Bring those big toes together. Your heels do not need to be together for this, but just bring the big toes together. Bend the knees, sweep the arms up, and sit down as if you're in a chair. Keep breathing. On your next exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, step back to plank. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, down. Tuck the toes, firm up the thighs, push back up to that plank, and push back to downward dog. Here's where it's a little different. Bring up the right foot and stack the hips, bend the top knee. Give your hip a nice stretch. Remember, when it gets tough, don't forget to breathe. Extend the leg back, square off the hips, Bring the knee forward and plant it between your hands. From here, put that back heel down at a 45 degree angle and bring up the torso. Hands can be here, they can be heart center. You can even put them on your hips. If your feet are really wide apart, you can step in that back foot. The goal for the hips is for them to be straight ahead, like headlights, okay? This is your warrior one. Keeping that knee bent in the front. Inhale, exhale, bring the hands back to the mat. Step that foot back to plank to meet the back foot. Push back to downward dog. Left foot goes up, stack the hips, bend the top knee, give your hips a nice stretch. Extending the leg, squaring off the hips, bending the knee, bringing it through, step it between your hands. Again, 45 degree angle on that back heel. Bring the torso up. Hips are still facing directly front like headlights, keeping a bend in that knee. On your next exhale, bring the arms down. Step back to plank. Instead of going to downward dog, lower down chaturanga. Release the toes, push up for cobra. <sighs> Exhale down. Instead of going back to downward dog, we're going to extend one arm out to the side. From here, roll towards that extended arm so you're on your side body. That top leg can bend, but you're getting a nice stretch in that shoulder now. The other hand I'm using to push my side, my body towards that extended arm. Keep breathing. On your next exhale, return to neutral. Bring the arm in, extend the other arm, and gently push your body towards that extended arm. Keep 
deep breathing. You're in control of the, the amount of pressure you put. On your next exhale, return back to neutral. Bring both hands in by your ribs. Tuck the toes. Push up to your plank. Exhale, downward dog. Breathe. At any time during this practice, you need to have a break. You can bring the knees down and push back into that child's pose that we started with. Utilize that whenever you need. Take one more big breath and downward dog. Bend the knees, look between the hands, step the feet to the front of the mat. Bring those big toes together one more time. Inhale, lift, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees generously and sweep the torso up. Now you're in that chair. So in chair, you want to think about not totally tucking the hips and not sticking them way out, but having this nice line from the top of your head to your, your booty. Inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Bring the hands to heart center. If your toes are still together like mine were, you can bring them back to neutral. Expand the hands to mountain pose. From here, we're going to do that sun D one more time. You got this. Sweep the arms up, sit back into your chair. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, back to plank. Exhale, lower down, chaturanga. Release the toes, push up into your Cobra, release down, tuck the toes, firm up the thighs, push up to plank, and back to downward dog. Lift the right leg up, bend the knee, bring the foot through to between your hands. Put the back heel down, 45 degree angle, sweep the torso up. Exhale down. Bring that foot back to meet the back. Lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Exhale down. Push back into your plank and to your downward dog. Exhale. Inhale, left leg up. Bring it through. Step it through. Put down the back heel. Bring the torso up. Breathe. Exhale down. Inhale, bring the foot back to plank. From here, either take that vinyasa, chaturanga, cobra, down, upward, and back, or just go to downward dog. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, cobra. Exhale down. Firm up the thighs, come up to plank. Exhale, downward dog. Take five breaths here. Bend the knees, look 
look between the hands, step the feet to the front. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep the arms up, bend the knees. Lower in the chair. Keep breathing. Bring the hands heart center. Twist the shoulders forward, the torso, and extend the arms front and back. Bring the hands heart center. Return the torso to the other side. Shoulders shift. Extend the arms. You're still in that chair, by the way. Return to heart center. Breathe. And reach the arms toes. Extend the legs. Interlace the fingers. Give a nice arch back. And return to center, heart center. Release the hands, Tadasana. Shake it out. How we doing? From here, we're gonna keep moving. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Step the right foot back. Your hands are framing that front foot. From here, you can put that knee down, the back knee. You can release the toes, that's fine too. And sweep the arms up. You should feel it in your hip flexor on the right side, the extended leg back. That front knee, you don't want it to go past your toes. Make sure it's at like a 90 degree angle. Good. Bring the arms down. Tuck that back toe. Bring up the heel. Sorry, bring up the knee. Put your right hand down on the mat and extend your left arm up. So you're twisting towards that bent knee in the front. Keep breathing. Bring that arm back to on the inside of your left foot. You can bring that back knee down one more time. Toe heel your front foot out towards the edge of your mat. And now you're in lizard. From here you can either bring stay where you are or you can bring your torso down so you're on your, your forearms. This foot, it can roll to the knife edge to allow that more space if you would like. Remember to keep your lower abdominals engaged. Take one more breath here. Turn that foot back to flat. If it's not, bring the hands back up. Toe heel that foot back towards the center. Frame that foot, tuck the back toes, lift the heel, and step the foot forward just a little bit. <clears throat> now you're in this parallel position, like this. And you're gonna bend from your hips, and now you're in pyramid. Release the head. Give your front foot just a little bit of a bend. 
If you have that block or that stack of books, you can have it right in front of your face. In front of your, not right in front of your face, but right out in front of you. You can grab that, and I'm gonna change to this way so you can actually see what I'm doing. Um, so you're from your pyramid. You're gonna put that block out to the side, put your hand on that block, and lift that back leg and stack the hips. And then you can keep that hand there or you can extend it up. And now you're in half moon. So it's very important that you don't bring that leg too high. As dancers, we like to get our flexibility in, but that's not the purpose of this. Bring it at a, like directly out from, as if you're standing on the wall, okay? From here, bend the front knee, lower that foot down at a 90 degree angle. Now the hips are facing the side. Extend the arms out. You have a nice bend in this front knee. And look out past your hand. Now you're in warrior two. I really hope I can remember the other side. <laughs> Flip that front hand. Reach forward. And extend back. This hand can either be on your your hamstring, it could be wrapped behind your back, but still keep a bend in that knee in the front. Return to warrior two. Bring that forearm to the front leg. Arm can be extended up to the sky or it can continue that line, that diagonal with the back leg. Bring the torso up, extend, sorry, straighten that front knee. Bring your arm forward and torso forward. And here you can use that block again and come into your triangle. I guess it should be behind you, huh? Don't worry, we're almost done with this side. Take a nice bend in that knee, bring it back to warrior two. Windmill the arms down, bring the foot back to plank, lower down, chaturanga or meet us in downward dog. Push up for your cobra, exhale down. Bring it up to your plank and push back to downward dog. Lower the knees down to the mat. Bring them a little further than your hips. Bring the big toes together and go into your wide-legged wide, wide child's pose. Bring the arms back underneath your shoulders. Bring the knees in. Come to your tabletop. Let's see. We did the right leg. So bring, no. Push up to your downward dog. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Look between the hands. Step to the front of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands to 
heart center and open for Tadasana. I'm gonna go back to this side so I can remember what foot we did. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold, step the left foot back. Bring the knee down, release the toes. Bring the arms up. Keep breathing. Return the hands to the mat. Toe heel the foot to the side. <clears throat> and now we're in our lizard. I think I might have forgotten something. I'm so sorry. If you remember what it is, go ahead and do that. <laughs> I do remember what it was. Bring the foot back, come back up from your hands, toe heel the foot to the middle, tuck the back foot, bring the knee up, place the left hand on the mat, and twist open, right arm to the sky. There it is. <coughs> We just did it a little out of order. That's totally fine. Bring the arms back to the front. Shorten your stance, keeping both feet parallel for your pyramid pose. From here, grab your block, bring it to that side of the mat for yourself. Shift the weight forward, bring that leg up, stack the hips, and keep breathing. Bend in that front knee, slowly bring the foot back to the mat, and extend out for your warrior two. Remember that back foot, the knife edge of your foot is towards the short end of your mat. Lift the front hand, reverse warrior. Return to warrior two. Bring that forearm to the front leg. Extend up towards the sky. Continue back up to warrior two. Straighten the front leg. Extend the arm forward and down. You can grab that block or book if you need. Return to warrior two. Windmill the arms down, step back to plank, 
Meet us in Downward Dog or take that vinyasa. Lower down, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward, sorry, Cobra. Exhale, down. Push up to plank and back to Downward Dog. Keep breathing. You can go down to your child's pose if you need. Bending the knees, looking between the hands, step to the front of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, hands to heart center, close the eyes. Giving your body thanks briefly before we continue. Flutter the eyes open, hands down for mountain. From here, ground down in your right, in your right leg. Lift the left knee up high. From here, bring the knee out to the side and you can place that foot either as a kickstand on your calf or above, but never on the knee. So you get to choose where you put your foot for tree. For me, because I'm feeling a little tired because <laughs> talking and breathing at the same time for this is very challenging. So for me, I'm going to have mine as a kickstand and your arms come to prayer center. Once you have your balance, remember to keep lifting in that leg. You can extend your branches, AKA your arms. And if that's a piece of cake, try putting a little breeze in those branches. Woo. <laughs> and if that's still too easy, try closing your eyes. Finding stillness, bringing the hands back to heart center bringing the knee back up to that high knee parallel and placing it on the mat. Good. Sweep the arms up, interlace the fingers, give yourself a nice side body stretch. And back up. Exhale, other side. And back up, bring heart center, arms open, ground down in the left leg, bring the right leg up. Continue on, knee to the side, find that sweet spot for your foot on your leg. Remember, above your knee, below your knee, or kickstand, but never on the knee. Keep breathing. Once you've got your balance, you can extend our branches. You can bring some wind into those branches or you can close your eyes. Bringing stillness, bringing in the branches into heart center, lifting that knee back up to high knee, and lower the foot to the mat. Good. Sweep the arms up. Bring the 
heart center. Bring the feet just slightly out. <clears throat> Keeping the arms heart center. Bend the knees, squat down for your malasana or garland pose. So my elbows are pushing my knees out, but ideally you want your feet to stay parallel. But if that's not in your practice or it's uncomfortable, go ahead and turn those feet out just slightly. Extend up. And then lower back down for Malasana. Hi, Milo. <laughs> Interlace the fingers. Stand up. We're going to do that side body stretch one more time. Return to center. Back down for Malasana. Extend back up. Side body stretch on the other side. Excuse me while I move my cat. <laughs> Return to center. Malasana one last time. And if it's in your practice, you can actually go from Malasana to Crow by sending the hips up. And maybe you lift one toe up. Maybe you lift the other, or maybe you just stay here. <laughs> but if that's in your practice, go ahead and do that. For the rest of us, we can just stay in the last night and keep breathing. <sighs> Bring the hands to the ground. Come out of your crow if you're in it. Shoot the hips up, toe heel the feet back into your hips. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up. Arms, heart, center. Exhale, open up for Tadasana. From here, I encourage you to find a way to go upside down. That you could use your wall, you can use your couch, <laughs> um, or you can try just a basic tripod stand or headstand. Um, or you can come onto your back and just literally put your feet up or legs up the wall. This is considered an upside down pose, an invert. So, your choice, you have so many choices, but get yourself upside down just for a little bit. Remember, whatever you do try, Make sure you come out of it slowly and controlled. Whatever you're doing, go ahead and slowly get out of it. You've done a headstand. Maybe a child's pose would feel good. If you did legs up the wall, maybe plow would feel good. Just give yourself a little counterbound, counteracting pose. And then find yourself sitting on your bottom. I'll face you. <clears throat> Extending the legs out, 
I hope I gave everyone enough time to get there. Extending the legs out, press the hands on the mat. Take a few breaths here. It may not seem like much, but I want you to think about your back body pressing into it. Not over pressing, but almost like you're sitting against the wall. And then from here, extend the arms up. Take your peace fingers, your two fingers, and reach forward for those big toes. This is where that strap or um, scarf or belt would be very helpful. If you can't reach your toes, you can use that strap or whatever you have to wrap around your feet and connect that space between your hands and your feet. Now for my dancers, I don't want you to dump over. I really want you to think of having that flat back hinging at the hips. So that might not mean that your nose is on your knee. And that's totally cool. From here, bend your knees so that your feet are on the mat. Put your hands on your knees. Make sure there's some space behind you. And gently roll vertebrae by vertebrae to your back. We're gonna start cooling down now. So making sure that strap is nearby, that belt, strap, scarf, whatever you have, even a t-shirt would really work. Extend that one of your legs up, bend it and put it on top of your other leg, extending the knee out to the side. Bring that bottom foot up and you can hook around, you can thread your hands through your legs. But now we're in this reclined pigeon. Keep this foot flexed so it protects your knees and your ankles. Try to get your leg as close to you, to your chest as you can. From here, bring your legs back to like a 90 degree angle with your hips and let that leg twist so that the top foot is flat on the ground. So now you have this spinal twist happening and you kind of look towards the opposite hand. twist, bringing that foot back on the mat, unhooking the leg, bring it down to the mat, we're going to do the other side. Extend the other leg up, put it over your thigh, lift that leg, hug it in. One side might feel tighter than the other and that's completely normal. Uh oh, I think we might have lost our Instagram. I'm not sure what's going on. So sorry. Jump on the Facebook. Bring the leg down. Twist. Stay in that twist. Let me see what's going on on that Instagram. Uh oh. Staying in that twist. Keep 
keep breathing. All right, are we live on Instagram again? I'm so sorry about that. Here we go. You're in that twist. Slowly bring it back up. Un bring the foot down to the mat. Unhook the foot. Lower down. Plant the feet near your bum. Your hands go on the mat. And slowly lift the hips up for your bridge. Now you don't want your knees to splay out. And you don't want them to completely hug together. But pretend like you have a, your block or book or like a little dodgeball type of thing in between your knees and you're hugging it in. Keeping those hips up for bridge. Keep breathing. For my dancers, you could bring your arms up into a first position. You could extend them out to the front, to the top for your fifth. You could even bring them out to second position. Wherever you are, slowly, vertebrae by vertebrae, lower the hips down. Go ahead and hug those knees in towards your chest. Nice counterbalance, counter pose. bring the feet back down to the mat. We're going to go up into that bridge one more time. Lift the hips up. If wheel is in your practice, you may do that. If you're not sure what wheel is, it's this one, our upward bow. My acro kids, you should know this one. And then if you're in your upper bow, bring it down back to the mat. If you're in bridge, lower each vertebrae by vertebrae down to the mat. And hug the knees in one more time. Okay, locate your strap or your scarf or belt. Bring one foot up. Bring the strap or whatever you have around that foot. This knee that's bent, it can either stay there or it can extend out, but we're parallel, all right? So if you don't even need a strap, you can bring your peace fingers to that big toe again, or you can reach to your thigh, your, your thigh or your calf. Just don't pull on the back of your knee. Keeping both legs parallel, it's not turning out. Parallel feet. Relax your shoulders too. I just noticed mine were by my ears. <laughs> we're gonna continue bringing this foot out to the side. So up and over to the side. Remember that bottom foot is still parallel. Really ground down that opposite hip so it's not coming off the mat. We're almost done, I promise. Bring the leg back up to your 90. Switch hands. And bring it over, crossing the midline of your body. So now you're getting this stretch in the IT band. The outside of your leg and your... And your your glutes. You can go this far or you can continue it and get into a nice spinal twist as well. It's your choice of how much intensity you would like. Take one more breath 
here. And bring the leg back to 90 degrees. Gently release it and bring the leg down to meet the other. Good. Bend the knees, hug the knees in one more time, resetting the hips. Place down the right leg or the leg that you just stretched. <clears throat> Get your strap again and extend the other leg up. Again, that leg can, this leg can stay bent or it can extend out. Either way, they're both parallel. Extend the leg out to the side. Keeping the opposite hip down and feet parallel, sorry, the standing foot parallel. Bring the leg back up to 90, switch the hand for the grip and cross the leg over the midline of the body. You can stay here. You can continue the stretch all the way for that spinal twist. And then return the leg up to 90 degrees, releasing the foot from the strap. You don't need that strap anymore. Go ahead and place the leg back down to the mat to meet the other. From here, we're going to start moving into our Savasana. So go ahead and windshield wiper those knees or find a happy baby. Do anything that your body might need before we get into our Savasana. Happy baby is this one if you're not sure. And from here, a lot of people, if you're streaming it, like to stop here, but Savasana is such an important part of our practice. Um, so I highly encourage you to not turn this video off yet. Um, so with that being said, we're gonna move into our Savasana. Go ahead and extend those legs out a little, not too much out of your hip range. And then let those hands relax out by your sides at a 45 degree angle. Your neck, just kind of replace your head if you need to. If you really want to make sure you're flat, you can do those heel rocks again that we did at the very beginning of class. And then let it settle and then that could be where your body lays. If this is uncomfortable, you can always bring your knees up and then kind of walk the feet out wider than your hips and bring the knees to lean against each other. But it's really up to you how you would like to do it. You can even have your feet up against the wall. Um, with that being said, go ahead and shut your eyes down, close the eyes, start focusing on your breath. During Savasana, we may have a lot of thoughts going across our mind, but treat them like watching clouds go by in the sky. They just go by. You acknowledge them and then you let them go. So try not to grasp onto any one thought as we lay here for just a few moments. Scanning through the body, making sure every part of our body is relaxed, releasing any tension you may find. Don't forget to check the tension buried in your eyebrows or your forehead. Release 
release your tongue from the top of your mouth. And just be. Gently bringing your awareness back into the body. Maybe by wiggling the fingers or toes. Maybe gently rocking the head side to side. And when you're ready, roll to your favorite side into a fetal's pose. Taking one more moment to give thanks to your body and for the time that you spent focusing on your body. Using your top arm Gently press into the ground, slowly pushing yourself back up to a sitting position, slowly so you do not get a head rush. Keeping the eyes closed, bring your hands to heart center. I have a few quotes to read. All that is important is this one moment in movement. Make the moment important vital and worth living. Do not let it slip away unnoticed and unused. That was from our famous Martha Graham. And I have one more quote. Being fully present isn't something that happens once and then you have achieved it. It's being awake to the ebb and flow and movement and creation of life, being alive to the process of life itself. Taking one more moment of gratitude, thanking yourself, thanking this wonderful technology to be able to bring class to your living room. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste. Thank you so much for class, guys. It was a lot of fun. I hope you had fun too. <laughs> Have a good Sunday, and I'll see you later.